Hi, welcome back to Dow Twang. I'm going to start with this zoomed in right away today. Um, and I wanted to do a little piece on triads in this minor sounding progression, um, Dorian sounding. And I'm using the chords, the backing track and stuff from the previous lesson. Okay, and it's called Dorian Jam, something like that, just a few days ago. Um, so if you want to look into that one, we, we really got into using the Dorian mode over this progression and um, kind of mixing that in with minor pentatonic and stuff. But I thought if you, in addition to those elements, if you, if you put this triad approach component in there with that, I think then you can really start um, doing some cool exploration and coming up with some real compositions um, for a solo over this. And I'll put this... Um, backing track uh, at the end of this video as well. So here's the progression. We'll see where it starts for us here. D minor. Just not sure where it's going to change. <laughs> Four measures of that. Then one measure of A minor. So here's the idea today. These diagrams all have the same three shapes, uh, or I'm sorry, they, the, the, the D minor and the A minor have the same shape, I'm sorry. Uh, the G is a major chord, so it won't be the same shape. So the, the D minor and the A minor are the same shapes, and I'll start with the D minor here. So just using these highest three strings, we're going to have three places you can play that D minor. And then down here, of course, you can also move up to here. Notice one thing that happened right away here that's sort of one of those silver lining things uh, um, of discovery is when it went to the other chords, I was still playing D minor. And it, there was some good little moments, certain notes of that, parts of that to me sounded really good, real modal sounding, real, real suspended sounding. So, um, what we're learning today, like most of the things on this channel, is not a rule, right? It's just the guideline that you're using to start exploring this particular piece of music. Um, in, in keeping with that, I should stay on the topic, right? And not <laughs> branch off to chase every rabbit that goes off there, right? You know, um, and I... I, I I try to do the best I can with that. I struggle sometimes. Um, so if we stick just to the triad thing, but remember in the back of your mind too, ah, you know, it also sounds cool to interchange these and experiment with putting them over other chords and stuff. So, but if we get one, some stuff figured out, some triads figured out, locations and shapes for each one of the three chords, one of our goals would be to be able to trace, you know, play through the whole progression by using triads of that chord's namesake and um, really try to keep up with that, you know. But, you know, be musical first and foremost. Don't, don't rush around to where, you know, you, it's, it's hard to know what you're playing. So... Well, when it went to the A minor, it's 
you can see on this diagram that it's the same three shapes we used on D minor, but in different locations. So we start looking into this a little closer, that it's actually part of see, that kind of bar chord. Just taking out those three strings and isolating them, right? Making a triad, a first, a third, and a fifth, a root third and fifth. Um, so, if that's for the D, then we need an A root. Right? Or, right, the highest three strings of that kind of bar chord. Okay, so you see how some of the pieces fit together? Some of you, this is, you know, you're already there and, and, and we're just sort of, but even so, you want to consolidate, you want to mortar these pieces all together and really start having the, the, the full support of your knowledge of the, not just the fretboard, but the sounds as well. So. Um, but this is kind of, you know, a visual thing, right? We're using the diagrams and we're, we're kind of memorizing, like, where these locations are. Now, for the G, the third chord, the last one, um, it's not, it's major. So, you know, the, that, the shapes aren't going to look the same, right? Um, you know, A minor. Right? We want, we want a, a, a major third that triad. So there's a few um, locations for that. Well, that shape looks familiar, right? If you move it to other places, it's something else, right? Here it's G. Okay, and then kind of like that type of bar chord. Right, well, but you know, those three. Now you use whatever fingers you want, you know, because you don't really have to play the whole chord. I'm just doing that to demonstrate. Now, I know we're moving pretty quick on this, but, you know, as long as you get the, the idea, then you got you got to do some work. Okay, another time around. an example. Don't worry about copying all that. Um, but what was happening there was I was doing strictly triads. Once I got comfortable with that, I started reaching up or down for a note within that kind of Dorian scale. You can learn a lot about like that, a lot about that, sorry, in the previous video um, using this same progression, the previous one on the channel. Um, and then a little, uh, you know, a little blues scale in it. Right? So you put those three uh, strategies together, make that part, all those part of your plan, you know, you can really open this thing up pretty good. So that's it for the presentation as far as the skills on this. It's these three diagrams. They're in the description section. And just really try to get comfortable moving those around, you know. Then you can start experimenting with letting them overlap, right? Letting playing a D minor triad over the A minor. Just see what happens. 
a lot of times you find great stuff. Um, and also um, different rhythmic ideas, of course. And uh, then, you know, some scale stuff, a little bit of pentatonic, uh, a little bit of Dorian stuff. And maybe, you know, just settle into that and kind of let yourself go. makes sense and the materials support your learning on this sorry um yeah let me know how you're doing with it okay i appreciate you as always take it easy and i'll see you next time